Hey all, Amanda here with your sneak peek prediction video for episode 9 of American Ninja Warrior season 13. This is our last night of the semifinals and our athlete's last chance to earn a spot at the Vegas finals. Tonight, the last top 15 men and top 3 women will advance and the two athletes with the fastest time will face off against each other in a power tower showdown. The winner earns a safety pass, which ensures the owner a second chance to run the course should they fall anywhere on stage one or two of the Vegas finals. But before they can head to Vegas, first, athletes must face this 10 obstacle course. As always, we start with the shrinking steps. Athletes run up five steps angled on an incline where the steps decrease in size and the gap between them widens. They then jump out to grab a rope and swing to the landing platform. Then, the lunatic ledges return. Athletes jump up to catch the first of two swinging boards by grabbing onto a ledge that runs underneath it. They then swing to build momentum to jump to a second swinging board with a ledge running along the bottom of it and a handle attached above for athletes to grab onto. They then move to the back of the board where they can then jump to the landing. Then, returning from season 11, we have the barrel roll. Ninjas jump to grab a handle on the first of two large cylinders. They then build momentum to lash A to the second cylinder and grab the first of several handles. They must climb the handles to the top, then grab the final handle and hang on as the cylinder then turns backwards fast and hopefully launches ninjas over a rotating wall. Then, our first balance obstacle of the night is the diamond dash. Athletes must run across four diamond-shaped discs that were suspended by support cables which allowed them to flip forwards and backwards. Ninjas must keep their balance as the discs stagger in height. Then, returning from last week, we have the very dangerous drop zone. Athletes first jump up to grab a horizontal pole, then rotate it counterclockwise, more than 90 degrees, until it runs parallel to the course, where it then drops straight down. Ninjas then lash A to a second triangular-shaped handle, rotate that clockwise 180 degrees, and then, while holding onto the outside of the handle, it too suddenly drops. They then lash A to the last pole, and again rotate it counterclockwise, and hold on as it drops straight down, then lash A to the landing platform. Ninjas then scale the 14 and a half foot warped wall, then jump a bar up several rungs to ascend the salmon ladder. This leads athletes to the crazy clocks. Returning from season 10, athletes first grab two handles that are attached underneath a large disc. Ninjas must turn one clockwise and the other counterclockwise until the handles move from the back of the disc to the front. Ninjas then lash A to a small wavy board and scooch their way from the back of the board to the front while keeping a balance between their hands. They then lash A to a second set of handles underneath a second disc and repeat the task until they can jump to the landing platform. Ninjas then reach their split decision, which provides the same two choices as last week. Athletes can either try to save some time and test their balance again with the diving boards, which consists of three boards balanced on springs centered underneath each board, allowing them to tip forwards and backwards. The first board is shorter than the others, and the second board is considerably higher than the first and third. It looks like ninjas also have to jump pretty high to make it from the last board to the landing platform. The other option is the upper body challenge, the dungeon. This obstacle starts with a vertical board ninjas must climb using peg holes. Once they reach the handle at the top, the board flips horizontally, leaving ninjas hanging at the back of the board. Athletes must then navigate across the board from underneath, and then must lash A to a second vertical board, turn it 180 degrees, and then jump to the landing. And if athletes have anything left, they then must climb the 35-foot spider trap. Athletes ascend a 35-foot chute by pressing their hands and feet against plexiglass walls and must push open three sets of doors at the 10-foot, 22.5-foot, and 35-foot marks, each door weighing 50 pounds. Again, only the top 15 men and top three women will advance to Vegas. We have 38 ninjas left to run, but 40 yet to be seen. Since we still have not been told which two athletes had to withdraw from the second semifinals episode, I will be using my list of 40 to make my predictions, but in reality, two of these ninjas will not be seen, not just cut from the show. I'm not expecting them to fill us in on the two athletes' departures, but once I know who's missing, I'll look into the reasons why. So now, based on the 40 athletes yet to be seen, here are my predictions for the last few athletes that I think will earn their tickets to Vegas. In no particular order, I can see eight-time vet and gym manager Mike Salinzi advancing to the finals. Mike made it to Vegas four of his seven previous seasons, and I think he has what it takes to get there again. I can see rookie Jonah Moon is heading to Vegas as well. 
Jonah lives with fellow ninjas Nate Hansen and Austin Gray and hit a buzzer taking 8th place overall episode 4, so I would not be surprised to see him advance. Nine-time vet, firefighter, and one half of the Towers of Power, this may be the first year I am really cheering for Dan Felizzi to make it to Vegas. Again, I think it was the gimmick thing, but the bros have really grown on me over the years. I not only hope he does well, but could see him coming close to hitting a buzzer. We'll see. Tyler Yamauchi returns for his sixth season, and I can see him heading back to Vegas for his fourth time. Although his run was digested episode 5, he took third place overall on the leaderboards and looked to be in top form. Jamie Ron returns for his 11th season, and I could definitely see his name on the leaderboards tonight. Always one to bring the fun, his last few runs have been either digested or joined in progress. Hopefully, he has a great run that we get to see in full. Another extremely likable and talented ninja, newcomer Nate Hansen returns for his second season and will always be one I will cheer for. Born with a growth hormone deficiency, this 5'2 athlete took third place in last year's qualifiers and fourth place this season, episode 4. I would love to see him hit a buzzer tonight. From what little we saw, I think rookie Jumpin' Joe Brown, who may train with LeBrec and DeGange, may be a surprise contender. I could see his name on the leaderboards tonight. Kai Beckstrand was the sneak peek run this week, so I will not comment on this run, as I may have inadvertently heard or read something about the results. However, from what I saw in qualifiers, and based on the fact that he won the American Ninja Warrior Junior Season 1 and took 4th place overall Season 2, I would have predicted him to advance and would not be surprised if he hit a buzzer. I also think it would be awesome if his father Brian also advanced to Vegas, making Ninja history as the first father-son duo to advance to the finals. Brian is a strong competitor, but so are a lot of other ninjas running tonight. I'm not sure he'll make the cut. We'll see. I would love to see rookie Cal Flores advance to Vegas. The young protege of Flip Rodriguez showed that he had the confidence and the skills to handle the course and pressure of competing, episode 5, where he took second place that night. I could see him advancing for sure, but would love to see him hit a buzzer. I'm not sure why six-time vet Donovan Matoyer had his qualifying run cut episode 5, as he was so fun to watch last year. Dressed in a three-piece suit, the classy ninja took 20th position, and I would love to see his run in full as he advances to Vegas. It would be wonderful to see him hit a buzzer too. Cam Baumgartner must be hoping three times is a charm for him, as he was disqualified his last two seasons, but definitely has the skills to advance. His qualifying run this season was digested, even though he hit a buzzer and took fourth place overall that night. Austin Gray returns for his fourth season, and I would love to see him hit a buzzer tonight. Very likable, extremely athletic, and unbelievably fast, I can see Austin having a top time again tonight. And it goes without saying that I will be cheering my favorite ninja, Flip Rodriguez, to the top of the spider trap. Flip is exceedingly fast and tremendously skilled, and I could see him being a top contender for the Power Tower Showdown, and if he makes it there, I could see him walking away with the safety pass. However, the last two ninjas I can see advancing amongst the top 15, I can also see having top times and facing off against each other in the Power Tower Showdown. Although 8-time veteran Ethan Swanson made it to the semifinals last year, he had to withdraw from the rest of the season. Now, he lives and trains with fellow ninja Jake Murray, and I can see him looking for redemption this season. But, seven-time ninja vet Jake Murray has to be my top pick for the finalists tonight. I can see him hitting a buzzer, making top time of the night, and having one of the best chances to earn a safety pass for Vegas. I would love to see Jake versus Flip in the Power Tower, but there are a lot of big names and new talent to contend with, so you'll have to tune in to find out how it ends. As for the women, according to the list I have, we still have six women left to compete. At least one woman had to withdraw, where Alyssa Beard was able to step in episode 7. I'm not sure which woman withdrew, but of the six left unseen, I would predict Lindsay Eskelson, Tyler Amon, and Jesse Lebrecht advanced to Vegas. I could definitely see Jesse hitting a buzzer. I would not be surprised to see either of the other ladies hitting buzzers one day too. If any of those women do not appear, I would hope that Flip's girlfriend Jamie Ross could advance. The other two women who should be competing include Heather Weisinger, who announced on her Instagram account that the show's producers contacted her and stated that the semifinal episode is locked and can officially tell you that your full run will be featured along with a story package. The episode will air on August 23rd. It has been a pleasure working with you this season and hope to work with you again on future seasons. So I would be surprised if she was the woman that had to withdraw. 
The other woman is high school sophomore Ava Palasanti. She is a rookie and looked quite upset when her run ended early in the qualifiers. I hope she does well, but for some reason, would not be surprised if we do not see her compete. We'll see. Others that qualified that we still have yet to see include Dan Wentworth and Brian Billingmeyer, who qualified episode one, Ben Whitlow, who qualified episode three, Matt Bradley, and Devin Alexander, who qualified episode four, and Rue Yori, Ben Martin, Jason Barber, Sem Garay, Brian Beckstrand, and Marcelina Riley, all who qualified episode five. I do not think any of these ninjas will advance. However, I could see the following ninjas, yet to be seen, be in good contention to advance, including rookie John Mack, who just missed out on the Mega Wall, but hit his first buzzer at a time of 2.23.55, taking 10th place overall episode 5. I could also see high school senior and rookie Sam Folsom advance. Jamie Ron's young protege also just missed out on a Mega Wall episode 5, but hit his first buzzer at a time of 3.03.63, taking 12th spot overall. I could see friends Kyle Soderman and Hunter Gerard, who were less than two seconds apart in hitting buzzers episode 5, also having great chances at buzzers. I could also see twins Marquise and Nathan Green, who both fell at the same place Obstacle 5, Episode 5, make it far enough, fast enough to advance. I think five-time vet, the bug ninja Eric Middleton, and five-time vet, the deaf ninja Kyle Schultz, also have great chances at advancing. So, those are my final predictions for our semi-final rounds. We should have no more than 72 athletes advancing to Vegas, but at this point, I am unsure whether Stage 1 will only be one episode or will have to be broken down into two episodes like past seasons. We also have a special Ninja Family episode coming up, as well as the debut of American Ninja Warrior Juniors Season 3. So although it looks like we're nearing the end, we still have a lot more action ahead. Feel free to share your thoughts and predictions for Episode 9 in the comments section below, and then remember to come back shortly after the episode airs for your full recap of all the night's results. Check out American Ninja Warrior on NBC every Monday night, because as we all know too well, on this show, anything can and probably will happen, and you won't want to miss a moment. So until the Vegas finals, enjoy the show!